Hi there. So a couple weeks ago, I was invited to participate in a game development challenge video hosted by none other than the Alex Rack 2, where me and three other YouTube developers compete to see who can make the most bestest and sexiest game in three hours around a certain theme like, I don't know, fishing. Which I know you've seen a thousand times. The catch is that on the second day, one of the other developers gets to give you a wild card of their choosing that you either have to do or add into your game. In this video, I'm going to be going over my game in my three days of progress. If you're interested in watching the full video where you get to see the other contestants' games, you can watch it here or you can use the link down below. Without further ado, let's jump into day one. Okay, so the theme is hunting. I could make like a a Far Cry Primal Minecraft with like a Subway Surfers twist, but I don't know, I don't know. Alex procrastinates a lot, I can probably wait. I'm gonna go and uh, just, just watch some YouTube. So yeah, I got caught up in all the hype for the FNAF movie and everything was going down and everything was going crazy and I was back into FNAF and then I was like, well, what if I took the whole idea of hunting and I just didn't do that? Some ideas to take the theme of hunting and invert it. Instead of you being the hunter, you become the prey. <laughs> Very original idea, I know. Anyway, here's how I want the game to work. You play as Guy in a Chair, who's being hunted by a tall, scary Caucasian man. Anyway, the main mechanic of the game is going to be like this walkie-talkie microwave-looking thing that allows you to hear noises from microphones set up around the map. You can then switch the channels to check each room for abnormal noises. Once you narrow down which room they're in, you can use the map to see where they're coming at you from. If the tall Caucasian man isn't in any of the rooms, then that means he's coming for you, and you gotta shock him before he manages to gently touch you on the shoulders and shake his head. The first thing I did was hop into the blender and start modeling the necessary props. I started with a swaggy desk and then I added funny microwave walkie talkie thing and a monitor so that you can see the audio. Because I'm a considerable guy, I want the game to be accessible to deaf people. At least this way since they can't hear the audio, they can like, read it. I don't know, to be honest I just thought it would look cool. I then proceeded to throw a bunch of stuff onto the desk to make it seem less empty, including this uncomfortable mug so that I could maximize the player's uneasiness. See, Scott Cawthon never thought of this, this is innovation. Once all of that was done, I started working on the movement and controls. So we've got something that's pretty smooth, you can look in all four directions and stuff, and uh, you can click things and do stuff, uh, generally just pretty cool, and with that day one was complete. So day two was mostly programming. The first thing I did was start work on the funny microwave. I made it so that switching channels actually did stuff. I also made this sick, dope, awesome, swag, sexy, super eloquent, very cool, not scary, unterrorist, completely safe, not confusing, Dickie Mahuba that revolutionized the industry of using your ears. Allowing blind people to read sound. Wait, now since it's day two, this means that today I get my wild card. I can't do that. I mean, like, what am I even gonna, like, like, if I just give the player the ability to flip off the monster to make him go away? That's stupid. That's dumb. That's, like, that's, that's genius. Unfortunately, uh, I was told by, uh, God that that wouldn't be allowed, so I had to get a different theme. Oh, I can have fun with this. I mean, here's a weird sound for you right now. So with my wild card being sounds, I needed, obviously, to make the sounds. So I hopped into Audacity and started messing around. Perfect. Secondly, what I did is set up some peripheral systems just to make the game significantly more stressful. The first of these systems was power. Whenever you turn on a light or shock something, it consumes power. Once you run out of power, you have to wait a while for it to come back. During that time, you don't have any power, so you can't shock things, you can't check the microwave for noises. All that's left to do is pray. The second of these systems was the insanity system. The longer you're in the game, the higher your insanity goes. The more insane you get, the more insane you get. Which is a great sentence. What I mean is that with each increasing level of insanity, you start to perceive things that aren't there, see things that aren't real, and hear funny noises that your character is allegedly imagining. Once you get to the third and final level of insanity, which I won't show you so I don't spoil it, you have a couple seconds before you die. You might say, oh, this is a dumb system because it will literally make the player die without them being able to prevent it at all. Also, you're very hot and sexy, and you're right. So I added a nifty little mechanic called sleeping based off the feeling I get when watching Alex's videos. 
where if you hold spacebar, you can lie your head on the desk and sleep. When asleep, your insanity goes back down. Also, when sleeping, there's a little melody that plays, making it hard to hear your surroundings. Overall, being asleep also makes you extremely vulnerable. After cleaning this up and spending more time than I'd like to admit trying to get all of these features to work, I went to sleep, marking the end of day two. Day three was probably the most jam-packed day of all, so I'm gonna try to keep this one short. First thing I did was make the monsters. I had originally concepted these things, but then decided that they were too cute and discarded them. So I just replaced it with this tall Caucasian man with a hole for a face. There's no reference there. Next, I made a simple animation for the jump scare and added some sound effects, camera shake, and flashing lights to make it more epilepsy inducing. Then I set it up so that the monster will hunt you, so if it's not inside of a room, it'll have a small delay before it actually attacks you and you die. Now that there's a way to lose, we need to make a way to win the game. Now this game wouldn't be a FNAF clone if you didn't win the game by surviving until 6am. Psych! I'm original, so it's actually 4am. Yeah, I know. I'm amazing. Now we have ways you can both lose and win the game. So the game was basically done now, and I only had about three hours left, but I felt like it was still too shallow. So I did what any normal person would do in a situation like this. I created an entire story and cutscenes for it, made a tutorial based off that story. Hey, is this thing on? Changed the whole ending based on the story, added three different difficulties, made a very, 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 very cool main menu, added lots of polish, a pause menu, and fixed tons of bugs, and lastly, made an itch page. Yeah, I know, amazingly, after I finished all that, I still had a couple minutes left, so I set up a swag itch page for the game. And once that was done, my time was up. So I said my goodbyes to my little Caucasian monsters. All the stupidly named debug messages. And Easter eggs I'm sure no one will notice. And sent the game to Alex. Anyway, that was the end of day three. May the best man win. So a couple of days later, we get the judges' responses, and as it turns out, I won. Except no, because Dolly's changed his mind and he wanted the viewers to decide who won. Which is like, totally fine. I'm not, I'm definitely not holding back any feelings, you know? I didn't cry myself to sleep last night. <laughs> You're delusional. Who would do that? What's wrong with you? I mean, like, what's your problem, man? Like, like is this about that cricket from like 10 years ago? This was, listen, if I had known it was underage, I would not have done it, okay? <clears throat> anyway, yeah, if you want to feed my ego and help me win this challenge for the second time, definitely go write a comment on Alex's video and give me a glowing review. At this point, I wasn't technically allowed to work on the game anymore, but I still had a couple seconds left from day three that I didn't use, so I used it to make a quick achievement system. Now when you beat the game on a certain difficulty, you're awarded the Clinton, which if you're not aware, is the cult leader of this channel. Not only is it a trophy in game, but you can see it in the main menu too. Now you can flex to your friends. Once I had done that, I could not touch the game anymore and I pushed it out for people to play. Then I went on the trip to Japan, because why not? And when I come back a couple days later, I found out that the whole time the game hadn't even been done. The microwave wasn't microwaving, and I guess the monsters like went on strike or something and they weren't showing up. I must have messed it up somehow when I made that little update. So I had to go in and rebuild and resend out the game. But from there, everything was dandy. If you want to play the game, which I know you do, I mean, I can see you drooling over there. You can download it from the itch page in the description. I want to thank Alex for letting me participate in this video. I think it was it was a lot of fun um, and I am mentally deranged and uh, might have murdered someone. But, you know, it's all cool and I'm glad that I was still considered for the challenge. Uh, this video is a little different than the stuff I usually make, so let me know if you guys enjoyed it. Also, I promise that a Rift devlog will come eventually. I just have so many things to show off, I don't even know where to begin. But anyway, make sure to leave a comment degrading me for my upload schedule so I can do better. Click some buttons if you want to be cool and peace. Oh, and also before I forget, Make sure to join the Discord server if you want to be part of the Carbling cesspool. It's very normal, safe, and not weird. If you want to help support me, I have a Patreon with realistic prices, also linked in the description. Join that if you want to kiss. All right, that's all from me. Roll the credits. You. You did it. You've reached the end of the video. And for that you have my utmost gratitude. Since you have watched till the very end of the video I have a secret I'd like to share with you. 
as cult leader of the Corbling Spool, I hereby bestow upon you the Rift release date. The future hit game Rift will have a full release in early 2024. Be prepared, or you'll have to pay the consequences. You've been warned. And lastly, thanks for watching up till the very end of the video. You may leave now. There is nothing else that is going to happen. I promise you nothing interesting will happen here. Why are you still here? Leave. If you don't I'll be forced to unleash my inner demon. Last chance to leave. Fine. But remember you made me do this.